I first got to know Sri Ramoji Rao personally when he was president of the Editors Guild of India. That was in the late 1980s. It was a time of deep churn and excitement in Indian politics, triggered mainly by journalistic investigations of corruption and abuse of power in high places. Bofors, which was being aggressively investigated by the press, and I had a role in that investigation, had come to the center of Indian politics. Thoughts of the coming general election were in everybody's mind. In July 1988, the Rajiv Gandhi government introduced the Defamation Bill 1988. It was an amendment proposed to the law of criminal defamation that had more draconian provisions than the existing law. These provisions were specifically targeted at investigative journal journalists and the media organizations they worked for, the, the newspapers they worked for. So much responsibility for seeing the protest movement through vested with the Editors Guild of India, which then as now had its work cut out. I worked closely with Sri Ramoji Rao during this inspiring movement and was deeply impressed by his leadership qualities. Firmness and steadfastness on the principles at stake, clarity on the goal to be achieved, and that goal was unconditional withdrawal of the defamation bill, but also wise diplomacy in allowing the government to save face. That was precisely what happened. The leadership of the movement and the lacks of journalists involved stood firm. And to the credit of Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, when he realized what he was up against, he summoned an emergency cabinet meeting where he announced that the defamation bill would be withdrawn immediately. He also signed a press release st stating that a free press is an integral part of the inner strength and dynamism of our democracy. I remember na even now Sri Ramoji Rao's quiet and complete satisfaction over the goal achieved, but no sense of triumphalism, not in the least. I don't want to go spend a lot of time going into the founding of Enard in 1974 in Visakhapatnam, but it was a transformational moment because innovation, the embrace of new technology combined with an uncompromising pursuit of high production values and excellence in reporting, particularly ground reporting, reporting on, on, on the field. Robin Jeffrey, the Australian political scientist, in his book, India's Newspaper Revolution, has a lot to say about the pioneering qualities of Sri Ramoji Rao and E. Nade, its marketing methods, its bringing out district editions, covering local news close to the people, its pursuit of credibility and serving up interesting stories but that were important. But this, I think, was a transformative contribution to the India's Indian language newspapers, and subsequently, as everybody knows, he went into television, ETV. But what stood out was a clear vision that newspapers had every right to take political positions, but they must remain independent from government pressure and assault. And whatever assaults came his way, we know what happened earlier and more recently towards the end of his life. Uh, he stood brave, basically saying that, I'm, what, let them take away everything, I'm willing to face it, but I will not give up this, these principles and the stand that I've taken.